popping YouTube. It's your girl Jay, and I'm back to pop my sh again. New ebook has dropped. It's called Mentally Motivated, which is a step by step guide which will help you on your mental health journey and improving your overall lifestyle. Also, it would mean so much if you guys can support me on that ebook, but also support yourselves. It's over 90 pages. I know, I know, I know. It's a lot of information and it's a lot of activities. It includes a gratitude journal, daily worksheets fitness planners like literally everything that's going to help you get your life on track so not only are you supporting me but also support yourselves like it's a good ebook guys follow me on all socials so you guys can stay tuned with whatever i drop whenever i drop because i know i have you know been a little kind of off youtube i actually was on tiktok live and the girl asked why have you been off youtube she like i love you she's like why are you on youtube and then she asks, do you work in the clubs? So that's going to lead into this video right here. As you guys can tell by the title, this is a video on why I stopped working in nightlife. Why am I not a bottle girl anymore? Why do I not waitress? I decided to leave the nightlife industry, also the service industry as a whole. Let's get into the video. So first and foremost, what I want to say is I've already talked about um, not working in the nightlife and working in the clubs on my tiktok but i was like why not do a sit down video and tell the people i started with like this is what started it all me posting bottle girl vlogs on youtube i want to say i thank everyone who has supported my bottle girl videos from the bottom of my heart like it was like a lot of people that you know was seeing me get to the money you know grinding and doing what i have to do it's just not meant for me anymore it's not meant for this new chapter that i am in in my life it has served its purpose. Um, when I started working in the nightlife industry, this was, you know, a little bit after COVID. I had just dealt with something very traumatic. I had bought a cash card, as you all know. I bought a cash card, got scammed for it, and I got extremely depressed. And I couldn't no longer work retail anymore because them, them checks weren't come, coming quick enough. So I first started working in sports bars. And then once I got to, you know, seeing that money in the sports bars, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take it to the club. And so that's what kind of led me into working nightlife. You know, I just needed to get some quick money also too I was in my last years of college I needed to get me a new car I needed to make sure I finished off my last you know years of college I need to pay tuition I needed to get an apartment like I needed money fast and nightlife in the service industry would help you with that I have a lot of friends who I've met that I've worked with at these you know clubs I have the connections that I've made working in the clubs I have, you know, just experienced a lot about myself, came out my shell. Um, I used to just be this little, I'm social on the internet, do not get me wrong, but in person, I'm pretty much like to myself. I don't really like social interacting like that much, unless like I'm really, really comfortable with you. So it allowed me to just open up and just be myself in more, you know, places, you know, where it's a lot of people. Overall, I made my money. I made a lot of money. I made the money that I needed. I was able to buy me a new car. I was able to give me two new apartments. I was able to, you know, fund myself and provide for myself and do the things that I needed to do with the money that I made for nightlife. But I do strongly believe that sometimes when you are entering a new chapter in your life, certain things can't go. And I will say this, um, I had this job that I was working in Atlanta um, for a long, long time. I have been there for about a year, which was the longest I ever stayed at, at, at you know, a club. It just didn't work out. And so... I think that that was just, you know, the cutoff period. God was trying to tell me, like, you know, this does not serve you anymore. Like, this is what you needed to get throughout school, through school. But now that you're out of school, I had graduated college. So it was now time for me to focus on my career. However, at the time, as y'all know, I was still staying by myself. I still had my car. So I still have bills. So I still needed to be in the clubs making that fast money because... You know, I, I needed to fund myself. You know, I didn't have nobody doing anything for me, so I needed that money. So I kept trying to hold on to service industry and nightlife jobs, working in the clubs, working in the lounges, and it just never worked. Like, even when it came to me coming, you know, coming back to my hometown, I tried to, you know, get me some little nightlife club jobs here, and those didn't work out either. And I know it's not me. Like, I'm a good server. I do what I'm supposed to do. I don't talk back. I come on time. I do the 
things I need to do. But let me tell you this, in a, in a space like that, when you are truly, and I mean truly meant for more, it shows. Cause you, and, and I don't mean this in no disrespectful way, but you are around a lot of low life people. And I don't mean in no disrespectful way, I just can't think of another word, but you're around a lot of people who don't see beyond that environment. And because I know I'm meant for more, because I know I am more, that shows, and I didn't go to work with that intentions, but don't, don't get me wrong, babe. I was going to work looking like this every time I stepped into any club I worked at. I would face beat, hair done, outfits. I mean, we all had the same outfits on, but you know, I would always try to remix my stuff, make it look cute. Like, listen, that shows, that shows. Like when you step into places like that where everybody falls in one line and you're the eyeball out, you're gonna always get singled out. Which is gonna bring me to my next point of why I also don't work in the clubs. Um, rule management, rule customers. You guys, I cannot stress to y'all like how much of a mental toll working in the service industry, especially nightlife, will take on you. And I can't have a business talking about positive mental health, positive mental health, if I'm sitting up here going, clocking into a job that brings me down in a sense. The managers, especially at the black owned businesses like the black owned lounges and clubs, are so rude. They treat their servers, waitresses, bartenders like shit. Like they act like they don't really operate as a real job. They operate as you work for us. You work for me. You work for me. Do things the professional way. They're so unprofessional. It it literally boils my blood. Like I hate it. Like they're so unprofessional. And you know, I've had run-ins with like good managers and people, you know, who I've had those long-term connections with, but I've also had run-in with managers who felt like, like they own me or something. I don't know. If you ever worked in the nightlife industry, then you understand what I'm talking about when it comes to management. Like they just don't operate as like a real professional job. And that's also something that, you know, that just doesn't sit well with me. It just doesn't. For instance, when I came back to my hometown, the first job that I had was a job that um, one of my friends, she's still currently working there. I told her I was coming back home. I'm like, I need you to, you know, plug me in with a job. I'm just trying to keep some extra cash. My job, the whole reason for me coming back here was not to worry about a job. It was to actually focus on, you know, getting back in tune with my content and my acting. I just wanted to keep some extra cash because again, I was trying to hold on to a chapter that no longer served me. So anywho, I ended up working at this job and long story short, I ended up getting fired for being on my phone in the kitchen. I was on my phone in the kitchen. Nobody could see me. But you got people that standing at the bar on their phones, customers trying to get their attention and they're sitting there on their phones and I got to take their order and whole time. I'm not even a bartender, but you got bartenders on, on their phone. And, and Oh, but because they've been working with you for years, like you get what I'm saying? When you shine so bright, people will try to single you out and ain't nobody finna make me think that it's anything different. I don't do nothing to nobody. I go into these places. I be the best person I could be, but that's all I can do. All I can do is be myself. And if if that bothers you so much of course i'm going to you know get singled out and and you know people not gonna want me to work for them and stuff like that like it has happened before you know the managers are rude aside from the managers being rude baby these customers <laughs> treat you as if you're their maid like i get i'm serving you and don't get me wrong i've had some customers that i served in like you know lounges in the clubs in the nightlife industry i've had some customers that love me every time they come they want to see jay they want they want me because they know i'm sweet they know i'm gonna take care of them they're gonna tip me good like i have made really good longevity relationships with a lot of customers that i've served in the nightlife industry and a lot of people can't say that they had a bad run in with me some people did because that's just the name of the game every customer you get ain't gonna like you but majority can say they love jay for sure I, and i stamped that i had my regulars pushing up and stuff but i also had people who and i do not like being this type of girl i'm never one to be this type of girl but when you are pretty in that type of environment because don't get me wrong you got some people that you know a come to work looking however but you see how i'm looking out is the same way i would go to work when you're pretty like this working in that environment people are going to automatically try you especially if you got a sweet face like this they're going to try you and i'm not one to be played with there's been times where i got into physical altercations with customers it's been times where i had to get people get people kicked out it's been times where you know i just you know things got blown out of proportion i did maybe sometimes i didn't handle the situation right but i was trying to make it right the whole time i was making it worse 
Summers. I've talked about a lot of stuff on my TikTok. Summers are very rude, especially in my hometown. Like in Atlanta, they kind of understand certain things, but here, Baby, you better not put no gratuity. They're going to complain about the gratuity. They're going to want to take stuff off. I'm going to be the manager of this club, this lounge. I'm not trying to do that, babe. I'm just trying to serve you and get you on about your way. But you want to sit and make a problem about the, out of every little thing. And people come in and intentionally do that so they can try to get free stuff. Uh-huh, let's talk about it. Y'all coming here, y'all want to complain. Talking about the food taking too long, the bar taking too long. That's not my fault. And one thing about me, I done took hella L's. Like, if my if the kitchen take it too long or if the bar take it too long, I'm going to my manager. Hey, this is taking too long. Take this off their tab. They're not paying for that. Because I treat people the same way I would want to be treated if I'm in a restaurant. But then you got some people who deliberately come to restaurants and lounges with, waiting to make a problem. Waiting to make something out of nothing. And I just don't like that. Like, don't get me wrong. I have had, you know, my fair share of working in customer service. And the customer is always right. That shit don't fly me because some of them be dead the fuck wrong. Some of them be wrong. So, you know, that also takes a toll on your mental when you're dealing with, you know, the management. Sometimes you can have poor management. Um, You know, it all starts with the head. Sometimes the management, you know, don't be on one accord. It's unorganized. So, throughout the day or throughout the night, especially during nighttime when you had a busy night, you got people buying sections, this and the third. One manager telling you to do this. The other manager telling you to do that. Like, it's too much going on. You're not on one accord and it starts there. And it all trickles down to the customers because now the customers are mad because the management didn't put things in place like y'all should have enough people running the kitchen to serve out food and drinks like you should have enough people and i'm not one to tear down black businesses but a lot of black businesses have the problem with thinking that everything goes their way babe you sometimes gotta you y'all want to cater y'all be wanting to cater to the people but when it comes to you treat them like you treat them like crap yeah, I don't like that. So, moving on to the next topic. Cause that the money is not guaranteed. Now, this is kind of self-explanatory, especially like if you're working in places like the sports bars or like even some lounges and clubs are, you know, they're not doing automatic gratuity. If you don't know what automatic gratuity is, it's a percentage that's already taken out, you know, of whatever the customer ordered. So, let's say the customer order a hundred dollars worth of stuff 20 percent of a hundred dollars will go to me um if it's 20 if the gratuity is 20 percent, some people do 25 percent, some people do 18 percent, some people do 15 percent. um and i will say this it got to a point when i first started working in you know nightlife i liked it i i enjoyed it it was fun um but it got to a point where i was only going to work because of the money I did not love it. Don't get me wrong. I love meeting people. I love, you know, my coworkers and making new friends and stuff like that. But I did not love actually doing the job. I just wanted to make money so I could do what I need to do and make sure my content, everything else gets to popping. Like that was my whole purpose of, you know, constantly keep trying to keep a job. The reason why I say this is because it kind of plays into um, why I'm not working at the last place I was working at is I, like I said I've, I've explained it more in detail on my TikTok I will insert that TikTok video um, link in the description box below so y'all can really understand because I don't want to go too in detail about that but um, long story short like you know working in a place like that you do get addicted to the money especially because you're making so much money fast and for somebody who got plans for that money like that that money ain't going you know just to pay bills that money isn't going to things like that and I'm not saying that's 100% right but that's my perspective and I truly feel like if something doesn't align with you anymore if it's not in your heart then you should just quit and not do it at all and that's the conclusion to what I had to come to because I only want to work in nightlife for the money I don't give I don't care about slanging bottles I don't care about trying to be the top bottle girl I was one of the first people to start doing bottle girl vlogs on YouTube I don't care about trying to make a name off of working in the club like that was never my goal I just vlogged my life on YouTube and it made sense to vlog the um, bottle girl life because I was watching you know the strippers do their stripper vlogs and so I was like cool I don't see too many people doing I seen probably one maybe two I don't know I had I seen a two other girls it was a girl in houston and i think it was another girl in atlanta those was the only two girls that i seen doing bottle girl vlogs before i started doing them and um i just thought it would be cool because you know stripper vlogs was out so i'm like okay cool like you know we all making money we getting to it 
I don't care about making no name off that shit. Like, as y'all can see, I stopped doing Bottle Girl vlogs. Like, I stopped, I actually stopped posting that I was working in the club even when I still was. Like, the, my last couple of jobs, like, y'all, y'all didn't even know that I was still working there. Nobody knew because I didn't post where I was working. Like, I don't care about that shit. I care about trying to get the money so I can invest and trying to, you know, get my business, you know, popping. But let me say this. When you are, when you're, means of money depends on somebody else's means of money so i'm depending on people coming and tipping me you know that those lines kind of get a little bit blurred blurred for some people who have higher expectations and want more out of life it's some people that do work in the clubs and the lounges just because it's fun they work in the clubs just because they get to wear you know revealing outfits or they work in the club so they can meet somebody so they can do this you know it's so many different reasons as to why people do that but my reason was the money and you know <laughs> my the the gm in my last job y'all he called me tip hungry and honestly i'm not tip hungry but i got plans i'm i'm trying to go to work so i can use this money to to do something else like and that wasn't the first time i heard that because the job before um the girl was like um you got the mindset of you know coming in here trying to make your money and that's fine blah 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 let me say this too though the difference between working in atlanta and working in memphis is a huge difference because the girls that work in the clubs in atlanta really is hustling they got high-rise bills that they need to pay they got bills that they need to pay, pay for they got you know they got benzes they drive they, they you know they driving nice cars they're living in nice apartments they have bills they have to pay for so of course they're out here making money i'm sorry no shade but the girls in memphis um, that work in the clubs, they do this shit for fun. Like, I can y'all do that shit for fun. And it's no shade if that's what you want to do. Cool. But y'all do this shit for fun. So, of course, you see somebody like me who got that hustle mentality, you know, trying to make my money. That's how the culture is in Atlanta, babe. Even in Houston, them girlies don't give a fuck about this shit. They got bills. Them bitches are staying in nice apartments. They got businesses. They driving. Like, come on now. Like, let's be for real. We got we got money to be made. So, what I had to understand is that so you don't want to let greed get in the way of stuff. And not saying that I was greedy because I took whatever anybody gave me. But also, too, I know what I'm worth. I know what I'm deserving of. So, I did have to come to the conclusion that that's just not the job for me anymore because I'm only doing it for the money. However, it's not a job where I'm clocking in and I'm guaranteed money, if y'all get what I'm saying. So I hope I kind of explained that in a way. But um, if it doesn't make sense to you, then it just don't make sense to you. Sense to you. This is my life. That's just what works for me. I can't be at no place and just having fun and smoking, drinking hookah. Like, baby, nah, where the money at? Like, what, what are we talking about? Where's, where's the money? Like, let's be for real. We was wearing skippy outfits fishnets boobs and butt out like come on now some people really do that shit for fun like i'm not doing that shit for fun like i need the money and then that goes into my next point working in an environment like that sometimes degrading like a lot of people put you in this category that you're necessarily not in it is a group of girls that work in the club so they can show they behind so they can you know meet guys every day they doing whatever they doing it's a group of those girls that just do that then on the other hand you got the group of girls that's in the nightlife industry because they understand that it's a business it's money flowing in the nightlife industry so they're trying to hustle they're trying to stack they're trying to pay their bills they're trying to feed their kids they're trying to pay for tuition you got that group of girls who just doing it just for the money and i love them type of girls because that's what you're supposed to do in any type of nightlife industry get your money and get out stop trying to be in the in the clubs and you you making the ass at yourself you're, you're you're making the ass at yourself like and i had to even tell myself that like when i first started working in the club like it was fun it was cute it was real cute but i had my run it's it's time for something new like i don't want to be put in that that category then you got the you got the guys making the post like uh she'd be like come see me at work she a bop <laughs> come see me at my bar she a bop man these girls trying to get to the money what is we talking about these girls trying to get to the money like you do get placed in the category you do and it's sometimes degrading like i even have family members um uh, saying like why are you even working in the club like you know you showing your behind that's not you know that's not ladylike you know ain't no man gonna want you you know you work in the club like you get put in the box you do like a lot of a lot of girls don't want to admit that but that's just what it is and it's what you want to do 
and how you choose to live your life but you do get put in the box like you do like people gonna talk shit people gonna talk shit anyway so it's not that big of an issue people put you in the box but it is you got people feeling on you it's been plenty of times where i didn't have to t fuck up on the nigga because he tried to touch me like don't ever try to disrespect me babe i'm here for the money i'm not trying to be sexualized but you do get sexualized you do get put in this box so understand when you do step into that industry you will get this certain image about yourself even if you're just in it just so you can pay your bills and make your money drug and alcohol addiction it's liquor you slanging bottles left or right you got sections that want you to take shots with them you got people at the bar pouring shots for you you got men that's buying you shots um it's a lot it's been so many times where i'm like i'm not going i'm not i'm going to work i'm not drinking today it's been times where i'm like okay i'm not gonna hit the blunt i'm not gonna smoke i'm not hitting no hookah you know i could do a shift sober like i can and honestly it's actually funny being like super sober working in like a really like big nightclub because like you're looking at people like this how we be on the weekends like just lit having fun some people have fun and you got some people that just do too much off the drink and off the drugs but um what i will say is this to my girls and this is one thing i don't really like that lady but one of my managers at a club that i worked at she said this one thing she said she had been working in the nightlife industry for years she said the drinks the alcohol the clubs is gonna always be there because you had girls coming to work getting high getting drunk and they're not able to do their job or they're looking stupid during their job they're too drunk they can't even serve people who's coming in to actually party and she said you know it's going to always be there so to my girls that do want to be in the nightlife industry the the liquor the drugs all of that it's going to be there when you go into this job go in there to work get your money and get out stop trying to be on the scene stop trying to get drunk with the niggas in the set the lit niggas in the section at work be a lady do what you got to do and you do that stuff on the weekends when you out with your friends don't do that why you you know at somebody's place of establishment when you're supposed to be an employee yet like i just feel like i never understood that like it's been times where you know i will say i got drunk and was a little high at work but i ain't it ain't never gave sloppy though it's okay you know hit the hookah take you a shot or two you know but don't be trying to overdo it it's gonna always be there it's gonna always be there but you do got people who gotta have a drink every time they go to work they gotta smoke they gotta um hit the hookah like they don't really look at it as a job anymore. They're looking at it as an escape place and they know they're making money with it. Overall, you guys, it has served this purpose. I met a lot of new people. I've met a lot of friends. I've still keep in contact with a lot of people that I work with in the nightlife industry. I enjoyed it. It has served this purpose. I have made my money. I have had fun doing it. And it's just not for me in this new chapter. I know everyone wants to know what am I doing now? So what am I doing that I'm not working in the club? Well, I am now doing what I was supposed to be doing in the first place. And that is pursuing content creation and acting. And this has always been me. This, this youtube content creation um acting skits you know anything that involves you know being in front of a camera and just being myself that is my lane and for so long i tried to feel like i had to hold on to a job especially a job that was making me a lot of money i was clearing at least a thousand dollars a week so i'm making minimum four thousand dollars a month that's a minimum and to be honest, that's a lot because a lot of people don't even see a thousand dollars on their bi-weekly check. I made my money, I had my fun, but you know, it's just time to move on. I just turned 24 and I told myself I'm not getting caught up in that in that lifestyle. You know, it was temporary for me. It was always temporary, which is why I stopped doing the bottle girl vlogs on YouTube because I knew it wasn't something that I was going to do. Now, even the last job I just had. I knew that that was gonna be my last job. Unfortunately, it did kind of end quicker than I had expected because I had a plan to kind of stack and then invest in something else. But I can still do that. It's just gonna take me longer. But you know, I, God makes no mistakes. God makes no mistakes. And one thing I will say that I'm doing this year, I am trusting God and I'm having faith in his will and he's guiding me into my purpose. I don't have the desire to keep holding on to things that don't mean me any well. Like, of course, I would love to be still working in the club, making that money, especially now. You know, at the end of the day, if it's just not for me, it's just not for me. If God wants me to put my all into content creation and creating content and sending out, you know, stuff for acting and auditioning, if that's what he has for me, that's what I'm going to do. And God, I just made that post on my fence. The God has been guiding me 
you know, to the things that once feel, felt good. When I was working in the clubs, I was not able to get on here and, and post. Like, I was doing vlogs, yeah, but I'm like, it's more to, to me than just working in the club and making money and not saying that it's anything wrong with it i'm telling the girls if you want to do it get your money but also know to get out don't try to stay there and make a life for yourself if you got to work there for a couple years to get yourself back on your feet do that or if that's just not for you then find you another way it's just not for me so what i did i decided to take a step back so i could take a step forward i don't think the same thing happens every time for no reason obviously it's a problem whether it's me whether it's the job whether it's just not in the cards for me it's just, i had to say goodbye to the nightlife industry and now i'm saying hello to being a full-time entrepreneur and content creator and it's not easy it's not but i will say this i've been um i haven't been working in the nightlife industry for like about almost two months now I have been so peaceful. I have been so happy because I'm finally doing the things that I love to do. The main reasons why I wasn't being so consistent with content creation is because I didn't see the money flow, you know, coming in this quick. And I was prioritizing money before purpose. And you don't ever want to live your life like that. Because the, the longer you try to chase a bag, you're forgetting about your purpose. I lost my spark. I lost my integrity. I lost the things that just made me feel like Jay. Like, and I couldn't do that no more new chapter in a new sense of life and i'm just so grateful that you know god has put me in a position like this to you know move forward and it's okay you know a lot of people you know they do things they even find themselves in careers and then after a while they realize that their career is not for them same with people when they go to college you know they sign up for a major they think that that's something that they want to do and it's you know not what they want to do so they change their major so it's just a new lane a new transition period i do ask that you guys be patient with me during this transition period um something gonna come for us something's gonna come i don't know what it is but i know that god makes no mistakes and again thank, thank you so much for supporting my bottle girl vlogs i have seen like a couple people unsubscribing because i don't make those videos anymore so sorry but um that's just not who i am anymore and thank you guys so much for the endless support and i will see y'all in the next video bye